All right, folks. Well, welcome to the next installment of the Maximum Performance Webinar Series by Maximum Acceleration. Uh, I'm Eric Genesco, head coach and CEO of Maximum Acceleration, the professional's coaching company. I want to welcome you to today's program. Of course, this webinar series was started a little, uh, well, just about a year ago now, uh, designed to bring together a community of learning, people who are really, truly committed to investing in themselves and growing their knowledge and experience and expertise in how they run their mortgage practice. So today's program, we're going to be talking a little bit about the ways that we boost business for listing agents. You know, the funny part about listing agents is, is it's, you know, the number one brush-off tactic that realtors use to get rid of annoying loan officers that are bugging them uh, is they tell them, well, I only deal with listings, right? Uh, most loan officers would turn around and run tail, tail and run at that point. The reality is I love working with listing agents. The reason I do is they have the buyers. I mean, listings are what bring buyers. Like uh, our co-presenter today, Kevin, has shared many times the, the excitement's in the home, not the loans. So today we're going to be talking about how to partner with agents, realtors, uh, to be able to help them boost their listing business in a soft and competitive market with a lack of inventory. That becomes a constant challenge for agents. And then, of course, being able to have just the time and resources to promote those listings properly so that they can hang on to that customer. But I want to start with today's program just by introducing um, you know, one of the things that we're really talking about here, well, if we're really talking about creating leveraged partnerships with uh, realtors um, and other business development partners, we want to think about why partners. Well, you know, there's a, an old Jewish proverb that says, plans fail where there is no counsel, but they succeed when counselors are many. You see, it's not about what we do independently. Um, one of the best ways I've ever explained it, found to explain this is think about horses for just a second. Now, back around the turn of the last century in the late 1800s, there was a group of scientists that were running weight sled testing. They were trying to come up with a unit of measure for a large amount of force. And at the time, the, the draft horse was the primary source of that kind of power. And so they ran weight sled testing. They realized that one horse could pull about 12,000 pounds by himself. Now, the, the interesting thing about that is if you had two horses pulling together, obviously you would assume that you'd get at least double, right? So each horse can pull 12,000 pounds separately and independently. You'd know you'd have at least 24,000 pounds to pull. But here's the interesting irony of the situation. Scientists ran into a bit of a problem because when they hitched the two horses together, they realized that the record was over 104,000 pounds of pull, roughly eight times the results of two, one, pulling independently. When they're hitched together and they're in alignment, two things happen. One of the most important things that happen, and I don't understand the geometry, the science, and all the advanced physics of it, but I do understand one little simple concept called leverage. You hear about it in business all the time. And in fact, you know, here's think about it from this perspective. You know, if we've got your typical realtor and he's generating 10 to 15 leads a month on his own, and your typical loan officer, he's kicking out 10 to 15 leads a month, you'd have 30 leads to exchange back and forth. But the reality is if we're working separately and independently for our own resources and we get that sort of tit for tat, you send me a deal, I'll send you a deal, and, and I'm going to beg for your business um, and, and prey on your referrals as a loan officer, I'm not creating true synergy. It, it's sort of that uh, tit for tat, you send me a deal, I'll send you a deal, we keep the scorecard type thing. But if we really had two agents working in concert, in true partnership, where there's a common goal and there's alignment of purpose, we can generate significant results. Two, uh, you know, two partners in alignment, if the eight times rule holds true, can generate in the neighborhood of 120 plus leads a month. And that's what our pro presenters are going to be sharing with you today. They're going to be talking about how to create leverage between you and business development partners using some cool tools and resources that they're going to share with you here over the next 40 minutes or so. Now, by the way, just one other quick example. You know, we all know there's a simple machine called the lever, right? The problem is if that tool is not used properly, it's kind of worthless, right? You know, if I've got that pivot point right in the middle of that bar, I got 100 pounds of effort on one side, I only get 100 pounds of lift on the other. There's no mechanical advantage. But if I move that thing a couple of feet to one side, all of a sudden, with the same amount of force, I get 10 times the lift on the opposite side. So what we're going to be talking about today is how to create that kind of leverage in your business. And my co-presenters for today are Mr. Jim Sanger, who is a top-notch originator and, and no stranger to this audience. 
being one of the most productive originators and also one of the most prolific writers in the mortgage industry today, also having, uh, to his credit, having been the founding uh, creator of the Platinum Marketing System, now owned by Vantage Production. So Kevin's going to take over, or Tim is going to take over at this point and run us through how to use the tools that he's created to create 120 plus leads with business development partners in today's market. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, one of the things I'd like to do is like just back up a little bit and think. You know, why why are we talking about what we're talking about today? So, you know, one question I'm going to ask you, and for anybody that's been on the last two sessions that we've had, this may be a bit of a repeat, but I just want to make sure that everybody is, is keenly aware of what we're looking at for the next six quarters. And this is a, a diagram that was provided by the MBA that shows us what refi production has been as compared to purchase production dating all the way back to the first quarter of 2012. And you can see that this is the first quarter that purchase production is going to start equaling or being greater than that of refinance production. So as we're talking about the importance of being in front of realtors, that's why we're here today. And I just want to ask you, you know, how many do you compete against in your local marketplace? So you know, if we want to make sure that we're going to do something in life that we've never done, we have to make sure that we're going to do something that we've never done. And the reason why is according to the NMLS, there are almost 395,000 MLOs that are currently registered with the NMLS. Now think about that, 395,000. That is a lot of people that are all out there competing for your business, and they're all trying to figure out where it is that they're going to get theirs. And unfortunately, this is a zero-sum game. If they get their business, you may not get your business. So, you know, why are we here? I mean, the, the long and short of it is, you know, we either want or we need purchase business. It may not be additional purchase business. It may just be the fact that we need purchase business as a whole. So the basis of it is, you know, how can we help you? Well, if you look at Zig Ziglar, Zig Ziglar says you can have everything in life that you want if you just help other people get what they want. So think about that. We can have everything in life that we want if we're just going to back up and start thinking about how can we help other people get what they want. And in this particular case, the target audience that we're looking at are realtors and also sellers and buyers, right? That's what we're going to look at. So how do we drive purchase business? The easiest way which is we have to boost agent relationships. If we boost agent relationships, then we have an opportunity to control what's going to take place to our pipe. We also have to boost our lead flow. So whether it's coming from realtors, whether it's coming from past clients, whether it's coming from new sources, we have to make sure that we're increasing lead flow because leads are what controls the direction of our business. If we're not talking to new people every day, it's going to be very difficult to close more business in the future. We have to boost the people that need us. So whether or not it's realtors, whether or not it's people that are looking to sell property, whether or not it's looking to people that are looking to buy property. Bottom line is we can drive purchase if we help enough other people do what we need to for them. So what are we going to learn today? We're going to take a look at what are the agents' needs that we're wanting to target. How can we help agents? How do we find out who the best agents are? And then once we find them, how do we wow them? And how do we keep them? So quite simply, what are the agent's needs? Well, the first agent need is right now, I don't know where you're at in your market, but I can tell you that the market here is very, very tight. So everybody's looking for inventory. In addition to that, depending upon who you talk to, there's a lot of agents that just absolutely need marketing assistance. I was talking to one specific fellow in the Midwest, and he was telling me that in his marketplace, 40% of all new listings do not sell with the original agent that they're listed with. So think about that. 40% of all the new listings don't sell with the original agent that they're with. Why is that? Well, it's typically going to be related to how the property was marketed or how the property was priced. The other thing that agents need and need to make sure that they have a strong support system. There's a lot of people out there on the realtor side, and there's a lot of people out there on our side that oftentimes feel like they're on their own island. So the more that we can do to help provide a support network to help people get more done, 
as we go back to the leverage part that Eric was just talking about, the better off that we're all going to be. And all this was told to us by Brad Korn. Brad is one of the top agents within the nation today. He consistently, for the last uh, numerous years, has closed in excess of 100 transactions, and he's routinely been in the top 1% of teams that are out there. So if we're looking for information at its value, Brad's a great source to go to. So how do we help agents? Well, from an inventory aspect, the one thing that we can always do is start by, by leading with referrals. The more that you can do to help agents, the better off they're going to be and the better off we're going to be. Too often, agents see us as the person that's walking into the office and into the relationship with our handout looking for referrals. So the more that we can do to help drive referrals to them, the better off that we're going to be seen as a partner and not just as an affiliate. From a marketing assistance aspect, one of the things they're looking for is, you know, they're looking for online marketing support. They're looking for print marketing support. Uh, all of this takes time, and sometimes it also takes money. So the more that we can do in order to provide that, the better off that we're going to be. And then from a partner support aspect, we want to be seen as a trusted resource, someone that they can pick up the phone and call and give them information, whether it's having to do with is the seller ready to go, you know, is the buyer approved, um, you know, I'm having difficulty with this particular this listing, you know, it's just. We've just got a price too high, and I'm afraid it's just not going to sell. Or if I get a contract, you know, it may not actually appraise. So we can help with the pre-approval and the seller support in this way. Um, one of the things that I've seen a lot of recently, and I'm not sure if you've seen it, but when properties come back on the market, one of the things that we're seeing is it's not a problem with the buyer. It's oftentimes been a problem with the seller, where the seller hasn't been able to perform because you know, they either didn't know how much they actually owed on the property, so they ended up as a short sale where they thought they weren't. Uh, could have been a situation where, you know, the property didn't appraise because they were too, you know, too aggressive in how they priced it. Uh, could have been a situation where they went out and thought that they could rent their property, and they encountered buy and bail and couldn't get out. So all of these things are ways that you can then become a partner to deal with the seller to help the agents get their listing sold. And the benefit of dealing with sellers is that they also become buyers. So this is just one example from an inventory aspect, why it's important to make sure that we're looking at it. Inventory over the last 14 months just in Palm Beach County is down 24%. And because of the fact that inventory is down, sales is also down. I know in many other parts of the country we're seeing that sales are up, but this is one thing that you could be looking at if you're not currently there. So I've got listed here, how do you find listing referrals, FISBOs? Well, one of the things that's important whenever you're dealing with someone is to try to make sure that you also have an understanding for where it is that they come from and where it is that they operate on a daily basis. The more that we can feel what they're dealing with, the better off that we're going to be able to assist them. One of the things that I also know it's very important, and Kevin has been very good at this, is dealing with FISBOs in the past and not only helping FISBOs sell, but also helping be in the position that if the FISBO doesn't sell, that they can then refer them. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time here looking at FISBOs just so that you have a better idea. And if you want to go down that path, it's one that I recommend that you do because it creates an opportunity to start not only creating buyer opportunities for you today with the sellers, but also referral opportunities, which you know are very important. So if you're going to look for FISBOs, where could you go to look for FISBOs? There's a couple of, uh, of options that I've got listed here. Now, these are paid options, the top three. You have Land Voice you have Buy Owner Daily, and you have the Red X. If you want to look at some free sources, you can look at Zillow and Craigslist. How do you convert FISBOs? Well, if you're going to reach out to a FISBO, one of the things that's important is you want to know what are their perceived needs. So according to an NAR survey, one of the first needs that they have is trying to understand and perform properly with the paperwork. How do they price it right? What do they need to do in order to best prepare the house for sale? How do they attract buyers? How do they um, you know, devote enough time to making sure that they can deal with all the aspects of the sale? You, know, you can come back and look at this. We'll provide a copy of this presentation to you later. But these are just the types of things that you want to think about that if you pick up the phone and call one, where do you start from in trying to help them out and make them understand that you're just there to help them. You're not just there to try to get their business. So as we look at how do we convert FISBOs, one, you want to appeal to their needs. You want to let them know that you're going to provide paperwork hat paperwork help, you know, so you're willing to provide a contract, a net sheet, you're willing to provide marketing assistance if you need to, you're willing to provide buyer pre-screening, and you're also able to help with pricing assistance where it's applicable. 
What are the types of things that you can provide for a FSBO? This is an example of one thing that I just recently helped one with, and we currently got it under contract. So we provided an individual property site. We provided some printed material. And we also provided on the right, what you'll see there is a Craigslist ad that actually generated the buyer interest in this particular case. But the more that you can do in order to provide assistance for them, the better off you're going to be in a position to do that. Kevin, can you address that somewhat? Yeah, sorry, I had my phone on mute. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. I mean, just with the for sale by owner, um, you know, the, the one thing that's going to build excitement in them is, is uh, helping them with a, a, additional marketing and, you know, leveraging them uh, to generate buyers and uh, and to get that relationship going. And, and of course, is where we're kind of going today. When uh, we we talked about this was the last two webinars, uh, but where we're going today is is how to convert those sellers um, into listing clients for our agents if they don't sell, which um, I think we'll find in most markets at least, at, at the very least, 80% don't sell. Probably the percentages are higher than that in most places. Um, but uh, if you're dealing directly with the seller, if you've helped them with marketing, um, you've helped them qualify people, and, and a lot of times, this in, actually the majority of the time, if the seller is going to need a loan, which most do, um, as I mentioned on the last webinar, the first question I ask them is if... Uh, you know, are you paying cash for your next property? Uh, most of the time they're going to tell you no, and that's where you're going to offer them your services. Um, so once they become your loan client, then you'll find at that point, um, then the motivation to get that property sold is obviously uh, a little bit higher because you want to close them on the next property. And at that point, you know, uh, that's when I would kind of start nudging them, like, okay, if, if we weren't getting enough activity on the FISBO side, um, let's look at some other options. and. Uh, and that would obviously be to uh, refer them out to, to an agent. And uh, in my time in working FISBOs, uh, that's something that I did uh, very often. I um, was always simply with the relationships I had with agents, what I was bringing to the table with them was uh, referring them uh, not only the buyers off the properties, and when I say the buyers off the properties, it's typically uh, I would do that if I was pretty sure that that buyer was not going to uh, engage that for sale by owner that they were just kind of looking and that wasn't a property they were going to purchase, I would immediately refer those people to an agent. And uh, also, again, as on the seller side, if they're going to uh, need to list their home, which most do, um, I would always put myself in a position to refer those people out. So when you're doing those things, as uh, Eric mentioned earlier, you're not going to agents with your hand out. You're basically walking into a relationship, and it's different. You're controlling the relationship because you're the one um, out there uh, feeding them business. And uh, as, as Eric mentioned, you know, when you got two people in there and you got you got a relationship like that, then of course, you know, the agents are going to be going out of their way to refer you business back because they want to, you know, they want to keep receiving business from you. So that 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 had been my experience uh, with working FISBOs and bringing agents into it. And uh, one thing you'll probably find with uh, agents, um, a lot of agents, uh, uh, you know, the, the whole FISBO thing, uh, a lot of them don't quite understand it. Uh, but I found most most agents, once they understood what I was doing, they didn't feel threatened by what I was doing or feel like, you know, hey, I was uh, taking money out of their pocket because some agents do perceive that. Uh, with somebody's working FISBOs that, hey, you know, you're, you know that you're, you're helping somebody when we're trying to get that business. But it's because they didn't understand. And it's like, you know, if you're, if you're working with me, then uh, you're going to benefit very much by me working for sale by owners. And... Uh, and then, you know, once they understood what you're doing, then it's, then it's a relationship they want. It's like, okay, let me know what I can get out of this. How, how can I, how can I uh, benefit from our relationship? And what do you want from me? I just would ask me that all the time. What do you want from me? And basically it was simple. I just tell them, look, when it comes time to refer somebody out, I look around my desk, and I always write my agent's names big on my files, and whoever na whoever's uh, name I'm seeing on my desk uh, more often are the ones who get my referrals. And, of course, that made sense because if you're sending me deals, I'm going to send you deals. Well, and the other thing that's also important is, you know, how do, how do we best position that relationship initially in the beginning? It's by the material that we can present and help them with. And that's what's going to be one of the big components that lets them understand that, you know what, wow, these people are serious and they really can't help us. So, no, that's great. Thanks, Kevin. Uh-huh. So what happens if they don't sell? You know, I think one of the easiest things to understand is that if, if a FISBO has already gone through a situation where they haven't been able to sell the property, 
um, one of the easiest ways in which to refer them is this particular script that I use. And I'm just going to run through it right quick. Uh, you know, Kevin, one of the things you've understood is, you know, trying to sell the property on your own can be pretty stressful. And in fact, um, you know, there's really not that many more things that are as stressful as selling a property. In our area, uh, there's over 8,000 realtors, and most would say that they would do a great job of helping you sell your house. However, you know, quite frankly, we know that many are not. In fact, there may only be three or five that would do a great job, and of those, I can only think of one that you probably actually get along well with in the process. So if it's okay with you, I'm just going to have them call you. Is that all right? And I can tell you that in those particular cases, I have not had people walk away from that referral. And that obviously opens up the door to making a great handoff to an agent. Now, you know, we talked about the importance of dealing with sellers and why is that something that we want to take into consideration. One of the things that I want you to take into consideration is this. In the first six months of the year, about 55% of the people that bought were either renting or they were living with their parents. So this is according to the NAR. So if we all want to deal with larger loans, what's the easiest way in which to do that? Well, it's going to be dealing with people that are moving up. So who moves up? Sellers move up. This is just a quick, uh, quick glance at what that looks like. So if somebody's in the age group of 18 to 34, they're typically going to buy up to a $250,000 house. Uh, if they're in the 45 to 54 range, they're going to be buying a place that's 260. And all these are going to be better off than what we're dealing with FISBOs. The other thing to consider when we're dealing with sellers, they're owner-occupants. And 87% of all buyers who are owner-occupants finance their house. 95% of first-time home buyers finance. 81% of all repeat buyers financed. In the month of June, 31% of home sales were cash. Why? Because these were investors. So if we're wanting to start in a spot where we know where people are going to be, that's one great place to start by dealing with sellers. So not only are we dealing with opportunities for referrals, but we can also deal with opportunities to help them. Now from a marketing perspective, Kevin, you did always did a great job on the FISBO side with Homes by Lender. And I know that you know a great deal of, of what's best to deal with, uh, with agents today from a marketing persistence or from a marketing assistance aspect. Can you address this? Yeah, definitely. I mean, agents are always looking for an advantage and, and uh, uh, when they're out there uh, on their listing appointments. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that wow sellers. Uh, we've talked about the last couple of weeks the, what wows for sell by owners. Well, you know, the sellers are still the same. So if an agent's coming in the door and offering, offering them the same type of marketing assistance, um, it's going to help them uh, get, that, get that listing. Uh, most uh, most agents out there are basically, uh, you know, just offering to, you know, basically selling them on their experience, and they're just going to put them on the MLS, throw a sign in their yard. Um, but we've found, um, just especially recently in this new uh, product that we've been using, is that if agents walk in the door, showing them additional marketing using the latest technology, and basically going going out of their way to generate a lot more things for their listing, such as you know, real high-end uh, uh, virtual tours, property websites, you know, t the mobile call capture. I mean, all the things that, uh, that agents can offer now, um, we're finding that, um, at least from what we're hearing, is that, that, that they're getting the listing almost every time. And that technology is, tr is, is, uh, is trumping uh, experience. I um, had a lady, uh, a realtor, and I believe she was in Tennessee, um, basically, uh, the, sent us an email just praising uh, that, hey, you know, technology helped me win this listing. And she said she was up against a, a woman who had been working that neighborhood for 25 years. And uh, was basically, she was up against that other realtor, and the realtor was basically trying, the other realtor was trying to sell the seller on, on her experience. Hey, I've been here 25 years, and I know this neighborhood. I know what's going to get your property sold. And uh, this other realtor, the, the one that was using the technology, was, you know, fairly new in the business, maybe a couple years. And uh, she uh, said, look, the seller saw everything she was going to offer, that she's going to actually build a website for her property, um, do the virtual tour, and syndicate it everywhere, and do all the social media stuff. And the seller was wowed by it, and she got the listing. So yeah, I mean, the marketing stuff is huge, especially when it comes to them landing listings. We lose Jim? 
And then also if you can create any type of advertising that runs through Craigslist, um, that also helps from a lead generation aspect. Right. And that, that kind of goes along with the, uh, you know, Craigslist is technically not social media, but it, it, it kind of is, and some people look at it that way. I mean, but, uh, yeah, I mean, and, and that's one thing that, 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 that she was offering the Craigslist assistance. And, and yeah, it's, it's something that people may not know about Craigslist is uh, the, the stats show Craigslist is still today the number one provider of, of, uh, of buyer leads, real estate buyer leads, as far as uh, people hitting it. And, and so when it comes to Craigslist, you just need to have a good mousetrap. You've got to have something that's going to be attractive, something that's going to make someone engage and then have a way to engage them on the other side. Um, so, yeah, Craigslist is very valuable. And these are two examples of um, a particular advertising that I use as far as helping agents, both from an individual property website as well as a Craigslist ad. So this is a Craigslist ad on the same property. But these are the types of things that if you can help an agent with that, not only are you going to excite them, but you're taking a lot off their plate and you're becoming a very valuable partner. And in this particular case, um, you know, not only do we make sure that we make the information available on the property, but we also want to make sure that if somebody has any questions with regards to financing, that our information is available to them. And we also provide print media that, so they don't have to prepare their own open house flyers or any property flyers that are in the house. But the more that we can do in order to assist the agent with this, the easier it's going to be in order to make sure that they're going to stick with us. So those are just some of the things that we do in order to help agents and that Kevin has created to help agents. But, you know, if you want to work with agents, you want to start with ones that are the top agents. You want to go after the ones where, you know what, there, we may think that there's a lot of competition for them, but one of the things that you'll also find is that since everybody thinks that there's a lot of competition for them, they might also be easier to reach out to, particularly if you're going to come to them with assistance. So how do you find out who the top agents are? You know, one of the first places that you can start you can start with your title agents and just ask them, you know, who is, who are the best agents, who are the busiest ones. You can ask for agent referrals. Ask them, you know, what's going on, uh, who are the busiest ones in your area, and what can we do to help. One of the things that I've always liked to do is do broker opens. A broker open, if you don't know what that is, is where your local association of realtors will have an open house where everybody can promote their new listings, and then all the agents in the area have the opportunity to come through them in one shot as opposed to trying to get out and see them throughout the course of the week. What that allows you to do is the opportunity to see several agents at once as opposed to having to go out and see each individual agent. And then also one of the things you can also do is, you know, go out on Sundays, go check out an open house. One of the things that I do on the weekend when, uh, when I wake up, I whip out the kid's iPad, go to realtor.com, Check out, uh, there's a search function that you can do to show me open houses within an area, and you can go out, you know, however far you want in order to find out where the properties that you might be interested in, and more importantly, the agents that are associated with it. And one of the things that I'd recommend that you do if you're going to look at that while you're on Realtor.com is you can also check the agent out, and it will tell you how many listings that other agent has. In one particular case recently, I found one agent who had 22 listings, and I wasn't even aware of who he was. So you never know who the great agents are in your area unless you actually get out. So take advantage of that while you can. How do we help them? You know, one of the things that I would always recommend that you do is, you know, take a look at what we've been going over here. So, you know, you want to assist with sellers. You want to let them know, you know, so if you have problems with properties that are coming back on the market, how do we prevent them from coming back on the market? Uh, from a pricing strategy aspect, you know, how many times have we had to deal with a situation where a property was under contract and the appraisal came in at less. I had one recently where it was uh, under contract at four and a quarter and ended up appraising at $370,000. You know, if somebody had a nice conversation with that seller in advance, they might have known that even though the agent could get them the offer, we may not be able to get it closed at that particular price. So we have to take a look at what's important at this point. And then also keeping sellers as buyers. I don't know if you're aware of this, but I was talking to uh, Dave Jinks, who helped co-write the book, The Millionaire Real Estate Agent, and he was telling me that right now 18% of sellers buy with their listing agent. So think about that. Four out of five people that somebody's going to list a house with are going to buy with somebody else. What we can do by closing the communication feed, get, feed loop, by closing the communication feed gap loop, and by also working to... Um, 
help them from a pricing perspective. We can work to maintain seller retention as buyers. And if you can take two more people out of those five and bring them back to the listing agent as a buyer, you just have the opportunity to triple their production in that particular case. How do we engage them? And one of the things that you want to do is we're catching some feedback there. You know, one of the things that I do is I'll call out. And trying to figure out and that is on, but uh, we, I think it was Kevin. Get, Jim, keep right on rolling with the program. Okay, so you know, I just call them individually and let them know, hey, you know what? I'd love to come out and meet you, let you know what I can do to potentially help you increase your business. Let them know that I've got some marketing ideas and I've got some other things that uh, I believe that people are not working with them on right now. That in other situations, I've had the ability to help people bring in one two additional deals on a monthly basis. And if they're interested, I'd love to come by and explain to them how I could do the same. Uh, we're not going to talk about rates. We're not going to talk about programs. We're only going to talk about what we can do to help them increase their business. Do we have Tim Davis on the line? Hey, hey buddy, I'm here. Hey, Tim, thank you for joining us. You know, hey, as we talked about different ways and things that we can do to work, reach out to people on an individual basis, Tim did something last week and Tim is a marketing director for CMG Financial in, uh, in Nashville, Tennessee. And Tim has always done a great job as a coach and a great job as a loan officer. And as he and I were talking about different ways in order to bring people in and try to get them engaged and, and create relationships, he said, well, you know what? You can approach them on a one-on-one -on -one basis, or you can also approach them on a group basis. And they had one group sitting last week. And Tim, could you just tell us about that? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> so. I don't know if you hear that feedback or not. We're getting it. If you can move your mic a bit further away from your computer speakers, Tim. Okay. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, one second here. How about now? Much better. Okay. Sorry about that. I had the mic and, and speakers turned on, so my apologies. So part of my job here is I coach and train up the loan officers that work with us, and and we've got a loan officer that hasn't gone out in the field very much, right? Hasn't uh, has kind of kind of relied upon his experience and and uh, tenure in the business, and we got really excited about this program. In fact, we've made it the cornerstone for the remainder of this year and all of 2014 to go out there and dominate the market in Nashville, Tennessee, using this program. And so what we did in this particular case, uh, this one loan officer had about 10 key agents that we made a personal invitation to. Now, we made this a very special event. We called it uh, you know, a, a private breakfast just for you. Um, so the invitation made the phone call, and all 10 agents showed up. Because we, we, we purposefully and strategically made it very exclusive. Uh, now, we're, we're big fans of doing group events. And, and the more people we can get in a room, the better. But in this particular case, we, we hand-selected 10, and we let them know that they were pre-selected and hand-selected for a very special private breakfast, brought them in, showed them the program. They all got excited. Uh, they immediately all wanted to be a part of that, um, of the Listing Booster program. And to give you an example of, of how, how we're turning that into business, uh, immediately, that, that, that very same day, one of them had seven listings automatically go in the system. And we're in the process now of contacting each one of those sellers to fill up what I call the to-be-determined pipeline. And, you know, we've got to close this month's deals, but we've also got to close deals for next month and the month after. So I'm always watching the to-be-determined pipeline so that we have a healthy, consistent flow of business and not this roller coaster effect. So that's just one of the examples. Now, since then, Jim, and I hadn't shared this with you, but since then, we do a, I think we do a really good job of, of preaching the fact that we've got to get excited about something because excitement's transferable. If I'm excited, I can transfer that excitement over to you. So we, we're always preaching about, hey, let's make sure when we take something to market, we're very excited about that because it's very contagious. So now I'm starting to get emails and messages from other agents in town that have heard about what we're doing and want to learn more and even wanting to sign up. We did. I actually signed up an agent yesterday that was just strictly off of an email. I've never even met this lady before. So it's that buzz that we're trying to create in the marketplace as well that's helping. And you had also created some buzz on Facebook as well in another situation, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, there's, a, there's some great ad copy 
uh, where we were looking for beta testers, and we kind of, uh, you know, specifically framed it out that we're looking for beta testers, people that are really excited and want to grow their business. Uh, and we got, uh, I think, eight responses off of that that were direct messages that weren't just comments in the system. They were direct messages that said, hey, listen, we want to be a part of this. What's our next step? So I think it's a combination of efforts, but I really, really love the group selling aspect because you can just get more bang for your buck. So in that particular case, you basically led with we have a beta test group that can uh, that we're going to be working on some marketing for agents, uh, doing a number of different things, and you know right now we're just going to keep it a secret. So if you want to reach out to us, we'll let you know what it is. But uh, you know if you want more information, raise your hand, and they did right. Yeah, they absolutely did. I mean, here's the thing about real estate agents: you know, they uh, they really don't want somebody else to have something that they don't because it makes them uncompetitive in the marketplace, especially when they go on a listing appointment. And so kind of use that to our advantage, that simple knowledge that they don't want somebody else to, to have a leg up. And once you set, the, set the, uh, the plan in motion with several people, then other people it's really easy because social proof kicks in. You're like, well, Betty has this. Oh, well, gosh, I need to get it too. Uh, so we use that as well. So, yeah, you're right. Uh, we, we, uh, we pull out all the stops. But, again, Jim, when I saw this um, and talked to Kevin, I made it absolutely the cornerstone of our marketing efforts because I believe that if we lock down these agents and they have the sellers and we make the contact with the sellers and we form those relationships with the sellers, we're going to have a healthy to-be-determined pipeline which is eventually going to translate into a closed pipeline. And I, I don't know anything else out there that really locks it down like that. Well, one of the things that we do know is that right now if you're in a marketplace where our average time on market uh, from the time the property is first listed to the time that it's closed is about 120 days. So if you're currently having conversations with agents that have 100 listings, 25 of those properties every month are going to be closing. And if you're dealing with the sellers in those particular cases, it's going to create an absolute opportunity for you to not only deal with the buyers of the agents that they're working with, but also with the sellers as they're buying their next property. And what we do know is that 70% of all sellers typically tend to stay in the same state that they're currently located in right now. So if you have licensing situations that you're dealing with, that's going to help you with them as well. But, uh, you know, Tim, thank you so much. I know you had some issues last night with, uh, with Angie, so we appreciate you spending some time with us. Hey, glad to do it, buddy. Thanks. I might have to hop, though, but I'll, I'll catch you guys real soon. Thank you so much. Right, thanks again, Tim. Uh, it's great to hear from you again, and I hope you have a great time. I uh, hope Angie gets feeling better quick. Uh, guys, I want to reemphasize one thing here real quick as we're starting to transition towards Q&A. One of the things that Tim mentioned, and, and those of you who have not had the opportunity to meet Tim yet, um, he is a top originator, just an awesome guy. Um, I, I, frankly, a guy I feel guilty that I haven't spent more time talking to over the last couple of years, in all honesty. Um, and what he and his team are doing is absolutely paramount. The reality of what we're doing in this current market is that we, as we shift from a refinance business to a purchase business market, one of the things you've got to ultimately uh, focus on is you need to be generating leads for 90 to 120 days out in a purchase-driven market. And just the sales cycle of a refinance business, I mean, it's a two- to three-day conversation. It makes sense or it doesn't, and you're closing in 30 days. In a purchase business, it's your 90 days at the inside from when you first talk to a buyer and when they actually get a contract in place and then you go into escrow and close. And if you're not looking at your January pipeline now, you're already behind the game and there's not much you can do to catch up. And our agents are in the same boat. And, and you know, one of the things we've been talking about in a lot of our coaching calls the last couple of weeks is that same thing. A lot of agents out there are actually kind of sitting back feeling fat and happy because they've had a great year. But the reality is if they took their foot off the gas for marketing for 60 or 90 days and they go out of sight, out of mind with their contact base, they're going to wake up to a pretty sad December and January if they slough off now. And so what we've got to be doing is getting the message out there to them about what we can do to make their lives easy and to help them get some business flowing for their benefit as much as for our own. And so we're going to go ahead and transition to Q&A here. Uh, there are some great questions that uh, we want to get into here. Uh, Jim, you know, I hope one, I'm not one thing I would just like to One thing I'd like to hit right quick before we go into Q&A is, you know, we said we were going to talk about, you know, how do you approach them, how do you find them. Uh, more important than that, you know, how do we keep them? You know, we're going to go back to the quote that we started off with, the Zig Ziglar. You can have everything in life you want if you just help enough other people get what they want. 
So keep that in mind. The more that we can offer assistance, the better off that we're going to be towards dealing with uh, with the agents that we're working with. And the other thing that I want you to keep in mind is that you know, just in my own past dealings over the course of the last several weeks, and reaching out to people in just this way, with agents that I wasn't working with previously, I picked up five deals between some applications that were already under contract or refinance that was referred to me from a listing agent as well as pre-approvals that uh, we know we're going to be under contract here in the course of the next couple of weeks. So it does absolutely work when you're reaching out to them. And these are people, once again, that I did not have a previous relationship with, and many of them are top producers. So don't think that you can't reach out to them just because you haven't done so before. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm going to add, add one other comment to that, Jim, is, you know, I think you and I talked about this a little bit earlier this week, is, you know, the practical reality is why do we like going after listing agents so much? because they have buyers. Sellers and homes bring buyers. If you brought the listing to that agent, how easy do you think it is to say, hey, by the way, and let's not waste your seller's time. Let me pre-approve those folks for you before you spend the time to show them the property. And how many buyers are walking through or expressing interest in that particular property? So it's really easy to think about the 5, 8, 10, 15 buyers who show some interest in that one listing, how to get the agent to bring those buyers to you so they can be pre-approved, so you have the opportunity to get started with the buyers when they first start their search process, when they're first mentioning that they're relatively serious about actually buying is when they start to engage an agent directly. Um, so as we work on this type of stuff, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rip through a couple of quick questions, and I'm not exactly sure who to toss this one at. Um, but one of the questions posted along the way here is regarding the single property web page and social media syndication. Aren't most real estate companies already providing those services? And my question was asked by Master Michael Mullen. Um, Kevin, is that something you could maybe tackle for us here? Yeah, yeah, I sure can. Uh, I wouldn't say most. Um, we're finding, uh, you know, we're finding that most most agents aren't offering that, um, and the other systems that are out there require work. That's, that's a huge thing. Um, uh, we find that uh, with some other systems that are out there, that there is excitement. The agents think it's cool, um, but then when it comes time to implement it, for example, if the agent gets a new listing, um, they typically fail to input the property and do what it takes to deliver all those things, um, or they want the loan officer to do it, and we know that takes a lot of time. Um, so we developed our system. Listing Booster has been developed from a lender perspective, and it's been developed uh, for loan officers to go out there and have a lot of relationships. And uh, so one of the things that our system does is it's automated. So once the agent puts the uh, listing into the MLS, um, as long as they're syndicating their listings out, which most do, um, our system will actually generate um, all the tools that they need that, they, that they've actually promised on that listing appointment. And roughly within 24 hours or so, they're going to get an email from our system congratulating them on the new listing and uh, giving them a link to all the, the property site, the virtual tour, the, the text code, I mean, everything that they need to be offering, it's all automated. And the cool thing, guys, is it's coming from you, the loan officer. So that, that generally will go out um, at 11 o'clock Eastern time is when our script runs. That goes out to your agent partners. So that's your cue to uh, pick up the phone that following morning and call them up and say, hey, congratulations on that listing. Did you get my email last night? So um, hopefully that, that answers the question. Well, I think the other thing, too, is that many of the situations people also have to pay a lot for. Even if, they, even if it's provided on a, on a company basis, there's still a cost associated with it. In some cases, it's a pretty big cost. Right. Absolutely, absolutely. So not only is there a time cost, there's an opportunity cost, uh, you know, at, I mean, and an actual physical cost where it's, it's, you know, the system works well. Kevin, I know you're going to introduce folks to those that really want to find out more, and a bunch of the questions are actually coming around to that issue right now anyway. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's like some of the questions here from Justin, um, how to sell against higher rate environment when you can't offer what a big bank or savings bank can do. Um, uh, you know, the, how do you handle the situation with real estate office that has an inhale splendor, some of these other things. Uh, you know, those are great questions that we're, you know, some of those questions we're going to talk about in, the, in a little bit of a, a different format, uh, future program. Um, but the, 
you know, the issues with some of those high cost programs, you know, it's great if you've got a web developer on staff who's got nothing to do but build sites for your agents. Um, but what do you do if, if you know, you're you know, an independent originator, single man shop type environment? Um, you know, you're, you're working in a, a little bit of a disadvantage because you're trying to catch up to the market shift that caught you kind of unaware. Um, and, and what are some of the things that you can do to try and get moving back in the right direction with some of these um, opportunities? Well, with that, since a lot of the other questions are dealing with what, uh, what we've led up to this point, you want to go ahead and get into listing booster, Kevin? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so basically, as, as we've talked about, it's, it's, it's definitely listing booster is a way to, uh, for loan officers to, uh, to create relationships with agents, but as Jim mentioned, it's a way to keep it because we've really taken the workload out of it. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things to where once, once the agent's engaged, they stay engaged. Um, we've had, uh, we've seen um, that once uh, a loan officer sets an agent up, agent up in the system, and they get them on the they get them in the automation. Um, the agents just love it, and we're finding uh, we're getting a lot of great testimonials from agents. Um, just got one this morning, actually, right before I came on. I got a really cool one uh, of an agent just really thanking the loan officer and saying, "Man, this this system's great. It's so much better than what I was using before. Um, it's no work. Uh, basically, I set it up one time, and then it's going. It's 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 on autopilot." And again, um, you know, we won't get into too much of all the features because I think most of us know. But, but you know, it, you know, the, when a seller goes out there, or excuse me, when an agent goes out there and offers this to their sellers, they have to deliver on it. And sellers do get gaga over this stuff, and we've seen that. Um, the sellers, you know, when you tell a seller, look, we're not only going to put your home on a website, we're going to build a website specifically for it. And then you offer all those other things that our system offers here. We got the HD virtual tour, uh, the website here again. Um, another thing too that we do, because again, this is being developed from a lender perspective, um, is we've added uh, where you can actually put links. The loan officer and the agents can actually add additional links to these things, uh, and that, and those link to uh, professional uh, squeeze pages, lead capture squeeze pages. A lot of the uh, property websites that you see out there don't offer this. Uh, for whatever reason that they don't, um, but we feel there's a lot of opportunity with that, and the agent can set it up to where, for example, if somebody fills out like we've got we've got a few ones of them here, like the one that's in the blue, that one's kind of focused on foreclosure searches. Well, if somebody actually clicks that off of one of the sites, they fill that out. The agent can set it up where it goes to their website and it goes to their IDX, so that the person's immediately getting content. And again, with everything this thing does. Um, this thing generates the lead for the loan officer as well. Actually, goes to you first. So it's you know. So what I try to tell loan officers that are doing this is that you know basically you want to look at all these listings as your listings and all those sellers that are uh, that that you know own those listings as your potential clients. So, um, but again, the thing that uh, has been really really cool about this so far, and we're 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 adding some more cool features, is that it is automated. Um, we've heard stories of Loan officers that have done similar types of stuff before, it was just too much work. The the agents wouldn't let the let the uh, loan officer know when the listing sold or if they updated the price. Our system does all that, so the agents don't have to worry if the property site's going to still be out there, if the virtual tour, the video is still going to be floating out there somewhere. Because once they once the property sells and it comes off the MLS, um, roughly 24, no more than 48 hours, it gets automatically deleted from from the system. So um, so yeah, we've had a lot of great feedback on it. Of course, uh, there in the bottom corner is the mobile device home tours. I'm in Florida. I'm in the Orlando area. I do not see any of those sign riders anywhere. And I talked about it last week on or the last webinar about FISBOs, uh, even more so with with uh, listing agent uh, uh, listings. Uh, you know, the, the, you get those mobile tour uh, text riders out there because you do capture leads on those. Uh, I sold my house. Um, Actually, by owner in Austin last year, I did the text thing. I got roughly 40 text leads in 60 days. That was just one by one house. So imagine if you know if you have that and 30 listings or more all around town. Um, it, and besides lead generation, it, it it really cuts back the workload for the agent. You know that the fact that they don't have to keep flyers out there and keep explaining the property over and over again. So, and to move on from that, um, yes, we provide a, a professional 
uh, well, actually the one to the right there, a loan officer to agent presentation. Um, it's a little, it's a little e-brochure that you can open up large and present that to agents. Explains the, the benefit of the system. Um, we've got a video as well, a little cartoon that kind of sets. We call her Angie Agent. It shows how she's a top producer, basically because of of Listing Booster, and she's looking like a hero. However, she's not having to put in the extra work, and that's kind of the theme of that. And then, of course, we have a listing presentation that the agent would uh, show to the sellers. And then uh, Facebook, uh, we have a Facebook application. Uh, that would actually uh, go for the uh, loan officers fan page. So loan officers, if you have a fan page out there, you can just by a click of a button or two, you can integrate that in with your Facebook. Um, that will actually feature all your agents listings. Again, that's automated too. It keeps up with uh, you know it keeps up uh, with what's coming off the MLS. We have an agent presentation built into that, and then we have one for the agents as well that it'll show their listings and a, a listing presentation tab as well on their uh, fan page. Um, you know, when you, the, that, yeah, I say, when you mentioned the, the listing presentation, I got a phone call one night at 9 o'clock from an agent who wanted to thank me for not only doing all the work that I was to keep all of her listings up to date, because they had been involved with, uh, with another site before where agents had to do it individually or the LO had to do it, uh, but because of the fact this was done automatically, uh, she thought I was just out there working all the time to keep everything up to date with pictures and text and price reductions and whatnot. And the other part that she says, she goes, I hope you don't mind, but I'm starting to use this material in my listing presentations, and it's already gotten me a couple of listings. So, you know, yeah. that's, just, that's just really cool. Yeah, and that's, Jim, that's a common theme that we're getting. That's the first uh, testimonials in it that, we're, <laughs> that we're getting from agents is that this is just really uh, hammering home the listing. I mean, if they're, if they're out there, uh, this, is getting them, this is helping them get more listings. And, guys, if your agents have more listings, that's more potential business that they're going to be sending you. So, you know, potential, it's going to be more leads they're going to generate off those listings. So it's very important that they're able to land those listings. And again, the seller integration uh, that we, we, we briefly touched on, um, we want to reach out to those sellers. And because the system's automatically working, uh, when that email goes out to that agent, you're going to see it, you know, come across, if you're on the Eastern Time Zone, about 11 o'clock. So when your agent has a new listing, you're going to get, you know, you get CC'd on that email. That email's gone to your agent, man. That's 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 your cue to pick up the phone and call that agent uh, the following morning. Congratulate them on the on the uh, listing, and you know, make sure you know. Hey, did you get my email? Um, you know, you got the text code, you got the property site. Let's get that thing plugged into Truly and Zillow, all the places that needs to be. And oh, let's reach out to your seller because see, the seller can actually broadcast this stuff to their sphere of influence. You know their Facebook, so you know. Right, it's, it's, it's all about it's all about bringing everybody together. I want to address a couple of questions since we're getting to the top of the hour. Um, one of the questions that was asked, you know, can you create a listing in the system prior to it hitting the MLS? You can do that. Yes, you can. Uh, just because everything else is automated, if somebody wants to enter the information, they can do that in order to show something as an example for a listing presentation. Uh, this is all right. co-branded, and because of the fact that it is co-branded. Uh, one of the questions that was asked was, does an agent have the ability to sign into this or participate in Listing Booster on their own without an LO? And the answer to that is no. Uh, the only yeah, way someone can have access to this is if they're working with you. Yeah, yeah. I like to, if you, Jim, if you give me a second, I'd like to share experience. I had a, I had a uh, broker in Nashville, Tennessee, um, where Tim's at, and uh, we've got some others out there <laughs> that actually uh, called us and wanted to know, hey, how come I can't sign up? And they went to sign up, and we only there's only an option for a loan officer account. She says, "I'm only seeing a loan officer account. How do I sign up?" And I told her that uh, you can't sign up. You have to get this through a, a lender. And I asked her, "How did she know about it?" And she's like, "Well, uh, one of my agents is using the product, and it was introduced to her by one of her loan officers." But she's like, "But I don't know that loan officer, um, and uh, you know, but we really like the system." Um, she's having some good success with it, and I wanted to sign up and sign up some of my agents. And I asked her, I'm like, well, why didn't you just get an account through the loan officer? That uh, is, and she's like, because he didn't offer it to me. She's like, it wasn't offered to us, so I just wanted to sign up. So anyway, she goes, well, can you please send me a list of all the loan officers in the area that are using it um, that, so we can kind of reach out to them? And that kind of gets into that Agent Connect program, that we are going to be marketing this to agents and then referring them to our clients. You know, so... Um, so that's one unique thing about our product. They can't bypass the lender. Because, guys, this is being developed by lenders. I was a loan officer for, for many years. Um, I've got Jim, uh, Jim's 
uh, helping us as well uh, develop some material. And um, again, we're not one thing when the agents get in our system. We're not trying to upsell them on stuff. They're not being pitched a lot of different things because it's not about that. It's about our loan officers creating agent relationships. It's by agents benefiting from our product without having to do much work. And uh, and, and and the bottom line at the end of the day, it's about you guys closing more deals. Absolutely. Well, guys, I'm going to take this back over real quick. Uh, there are a ton of questions coming through about the listing booster, how to get signed up, how to join on with the program. Uh, I know Jim and Kevin, you guys have put together some special deals for our maximum acceleration audience here. Uh, and I know that you've talked about a, a number of different ways to participate. By the way, guys, if you feel like you've really been fed today, uh, I know we didn't get a we didn't get to all the questions. There's no way we could. There, and, and I, but I will guarantee you that we're going to be going back through this list of all the questions answered, and our coaching team and Kevin's team, uh, along with Jim and, and Tim Davis, are probably going to be helping with following up and making sure that those questions are getting answered uh, by our professional coaching staff as well um, in conjunction with how to help you guys get this up and running. When Kevin introduced me to this program, I get pretty excited about it because I've, you know, I've, we've seen our clients deal with the same frustrations, challenges, and, and difficulties that everybody has expressed in today's webinar. Uh, with the property sites, it's a cool idea, but it's a ton of extra work. Uh, you know, the agents don't participate or use it because it's too difficult. There's too much friction to be able to implement. When, when Kevin and, and uh, Jim showed me this system, I was like, I, I mean, I was completely blown away. And, and so was, uh, you know, Brad Korn, one of our other maximum acceleration coaches. Guys, it, it, I mean, this is not, I mean, this is, I mean, it's, you know, you, you get one listing with one agent that turns into one deal, and you just paid for 10 years worth of your subscription. Um, you know, you're going to get a 10, 20, 50, 100 times ROI. And just like I talked about at the very beginning of the today's program, you know, it's about creating that eight times results, that 120 plus leads per agent. You know, you get four or five listings on this thing where every buyer inquiry and, and tag gets forwarded directly to you. All of a sudden, you're getting, you know, 20, 30, 40, you know, leads a week flooding you, and then you're going to have to ramp up your staff pretty fast to how to accommodate that volume of leads um, as far as mortgage business. I guarantee you, you'll have more business than you can possibly manage, and you'll be asking the question, how do I keep up? Um, which is, by the way, where the Maximum Acceleration loves to get involved and help you with operational systems and structure and efficiency and team building and how to really maximize your sales effectiveness at point of sale. Um, but guys, check this program out. Go take advantage of the, the free trial offer that Kevin and, and Jim have offered here. Uh, I think there was one more special offer, Jim, that you wanted to put in front of these guys today. And, and then there's just a couple of quick things I want to make sure I have time to share with the audience. Hang on to the very end because there's one other special thing I want to make sure that, that, that you guys get as a thank you gift for joining today's program. Well, the, the typical price that, uh, that Kevin has arranged for this is normally $197 a month. And $197 a month, uh, what you get with that is you have the ability to work with 100 agents. So you can enroll 100 agents in this system. And in addition to 100 agents, there's also no limit to the number of properties that can also be promoted with this. So you basically have, for all intents and purposes, an unlimited opportunity to go out into your marketplace and take down as many agent relationships as you can. Now, one of the questions was asked, you know, from a RESPA aspect, at 167 a month, which is the special price here, which is just a phenomenal offer, that basically breaks out to about $2,000 on an annual basis. So to be RESPA compliant, you have the ability to go to an agent and charge them $10 a year for all the features that are provided here. And just to let you know that the stuff that, that has been looked at right now is just at the tip of the iceberg of what Kevin is creating. Uh, it's truly just a, an end-all system from a lead generation aspect and from an agent co-productivity tool. So as you look at that, I mean, just think about that. I've already picked up five, five deals that are, in essence, going to pay back somewhere north of $15,000. And I've only been involved with the system for a period of about five weeks. And the, the greatest thing about all of it is the fact that it's all automated and it continues to roll. So uh, we continue to target more agents. And it's just a phenomenal, phenomenal tool. So yeah, at the very minimum, you know, do the trial. But I think once you get involved with the trial, it's, it's just going to pop for you. And the other thing, too, that I just wanted to make sure that people understood is that once you enroll an agent, all of the properties that they have are going to populate automatically. And everything's going to be synced up. So I had one particular agent that I brought in. He had 22 listings. 
and everything was done automatically on that to create individual property websites, to do the virtual tours, to create the print material, to do all of that in less than three minutes. Where if you worked with one of the other systems that were out there, I mean, that would have taken you an excessively long period of time that somebody mentioned in the questions that you could pay a virtual assistant a buck and a half an hour for. I don't even want to have to delegate that. I just want to make sure that it's all here so that it can be done and I know that it's done right. And the only thing that I have to worry about is picking up the phone and calling the agent or calling the seller. So it's, a, it's just a phenomenal tool. I want to thank Kevin for creating it just for what it's starting to do for my business. And I'm excited because of what I know it can do for yours as well as everybody else that you're participating with. And the other thing that um, we talked about here is that Kevin, since he did so much with FISBOs in the past, and we started about that so that you could have an idea of what, uh, you know, you could put yourself into the mindset of your agent as they're contacting FISBOs looking for referrals. Kevin created a FISBO marketing manual with scripts and email conversion follow-up campaigns. And for everybody that signs up today, that's going to be automatically included as well as the fact that there's a 21-day blueprint that will be rolled out towards the end of this week that will help you convert and explode your agent referral business. So I'm just excited for what, uh, for what everybody has in store for them, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you can do from it. Awesome, awesome. Well, like I said, take action is the key here. Um, and the thing that I want to walk you through, guys, is like I said at the beginning, if you're going to be the accountability partner, if you're going to be the resource, the running buddy for these agents, and think about what do the top performers in any field have in common? You know, they all had somebody to hold them accountable. The, the Mike, Michael Jordan to the Wayne Gretzky's to the Tom Brady's of the world, they all had somebody who cared as much, if not more, about their own success as they did. And it, so when you become that accountability partner to your, 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 your agents, when you're talking to them about streamlining their listing process and how to maximize their ability to win listing presentations and find multiple referrals from other listings to really own and dominate a neighborhood, um, and all of a sudden you transform the value you provide to those agents and you become so much more valuable and every other loan officer out there who's just promised some great rates and good service and, and the guy who can get their deals done, you, you know, you, you blow those guys completely out of the water when you transcend the value to the level of becoming a true accountability partner to those business development partners, those agents that you want to target and work with. And so and I know we're real short on time. We're actually a few minutes over plan uh, right now. but. Long story short, when it comes down to it, you got a 95% chance of executing when you get somebody to commit and make a, a timeline deadline. So the one thing that I want you guys to think about and do as we're walking through the accountability process, if you're at all interested in finding your own accountability partner through coaching, you can get started for as little as $14.95 a month with the one-on-one -on -one coaching program we offer. In addition to that, you get great bonus tools, resources, materials like over 14,000 hours worth of content, totaling over $12,000 in value. In addition to that, um, just a couple of quick upcoming events to, to be aware of. If, if, you know, if you're looking at just kind of the do-it-yourself model and you're not quite ready for a one-on-one -on -one coaching, if you're not ready to step up and make that personal investment, there's still some great resources our team is going to be providing you in the next couple of weeks. Leading up to the NAM National Conference, which Kevin and, and Jim are going to be joining us at, they're going to be speaking on a Power Up Your Purchase panel. Um, as well, sharing ideas in, in much more great detail than, than what they've shared today as to how you can come out and meet these guys. Tomorrow we've got another preview webinar, some of the great speakers we're going to have out at the NAM National Maximum Growth Summit Conference. Um, top originator pushing over 25 loans a month, Brenda, Scott, Brenda Costas is going to be joining us on the webinar tomorrow, along with digital engineer and for his best rate referrals, Mark Madsen, uh, who always has some great things to say about how to power up your online presence. Um, on the webinar tomorrow at 11 o'clock. If you're interested in checking out that program, you can jump to our website, www.mxlcoach.com slash webinars. Sign up for that program. Um, next week, we're also going to have on back on the program uh, coming up. Uh, by the way, uh, oops, hold on. Uh, jumped ahead just a little bit too far here. Jim, can you back me up two slides? Three. Go back one more slide for me if you can. Okay, also, if you want information about the NAM National Conference, live in Las Vegas at Harris Casino from the 19th to the 21st of October, Saturday through, uh, through Monday, make sure you plan on staying all the way through Monday night. So you want to make sure those flights home are later than 7 o'clock or better. We'll be wrapping it up about 6.30 in the evening on Monday night, uh, Monday the 21st. And, and 
we're going to be going through a, about a five-hour power up your purchase business. Our planning to win growth summit uh, for 2014 is going to be taking place from 1:30 to 5:30 on Monday night, the 21st. Great speakers like Greg Frost and Renee Rodriguez are going to be joining the rest of the coaching team at that event. Three tickets are over; those expired last week. But if you still are interested in coming, be 250 bucks for one of the best conferences for the next year that you're going to be able to get out and, and find out more about how to power up your purchase business. You're going to get to work hands-on with great guys like uh, Jim and Kevin who shared this wonderful program with you. Well worth the investment to come on out and hang out with a couple of the top originators in the business for a couple of days. Uh, if you're interested in more information about that program, go to namnational.com, www.namnational.com. Now, the last thing we want to do with today's program if you're interested in finding out more about the Maximum Acceleration One-on-One -on -one Coaching Program, the easiest way to find out is experience it. We're going to be doing a series of uh, coaching experience webinars as well as one-on-one -on -one strategy sessions that you'll be able to have advantage of. First step is go to mxlcoach.com slash strategy and indicate that you'd like more information about the coaching program. Or you can also post that request right in the Q&A right here and now. Uh, again, those one-on-one -on -one sessions are filled on a first-come, first-served basis because there's only a limited amount of capacity in each of our coaches' schedules each week. Uh, and then there's time there taking away from active paying clients to be able to provide that free coaching to you um, for that one-on-one -on -one session. Now, the last thing that I wanted to share with you is I told you all I had a special gift for you. And the gift is your own success. You guys have invested time to join in this program. Congratulations because you're less than the 5% who don't take the time out of their business to, to learn and grow and develop their skills. It's, it's like Abe Lincoln used to say, if I had six hours to chop down a tree, I'd spend five hours sharpening my ax. Well, you guys have sharpened your ax, but there's one final piece to it. If you don't put the ideas into action, it will have no value to your business because ideas without action are worthless. So take two more minutes before you jump into your next phone call, before you look at your next email, before you, uh, you know, do anything else with your business, take and solidify what you've learned from today's program. So decide what was the one most valuable thing you've heard in this program that you want to implement right away. You'll have the recording. We'll be sending that out within a couple of days once we get the video editing and rendering work done, uh, post-production, so we can get that all. That's about four hours of work on our team's time, so it takes a couple of days to get that done usually. But by the end of the week, you'll have the video back in your hands that you can go back through today's program and pick up the other 50 ideas that Jim and Kevin and Tim Davis and I shared with you today. Right now, just pick one you're going to implement first. Secondly, what action do you need to take to make that a part of your daily business? What is the very next step you need to take to take to make this happen for you? Third, by when are you going to have that action implemented? Okay. And then fourth, who are you going to use as your accountability partner? Who's going to be that outside resource, that person that follows up with you a week or two down that you've promised that you're going to uh, follow through on, that you're going to tell them what you're going to do and you're going to ask them to follow up on whether you've done it or not within a week or two? to hold you accountable. You know, it's kind of the running buddy concept. Think about it. You know, you decide in January you want to start running to lose some weight. You get up January 5th and it's nasty, wet, cold, and you've been running the first couple of days and you're exhausted. You get over, you hit the snooze button, you never go out and jog again. But instead, you, the alternative would be what if you had a buddy who you met at the, you, you bumped into at the Christmas party or the New Year's Eve party and he said, you know what, let's go jogging together. And it's January 6th, and it's cold, and it's wet, and it's nasty, and you're sore, and your muscles are tired, and you overdid it the day before. But you know your buddy's going to be on your doorstep at 5.30 to take you jogging, so you get up and do it anyway. The power of the promise we make to somebody else is one of the most effective accountability tools that we have in taking action and completing and following through on the projects that we initiate. So... Decide who that accountability partner is going to be. If you're looking for some help in that respect and you want to talk a little bit more about the coaching program, if you'd like to take advantage of one of those no-cost, no-obligation strategy sessions, go ahead and hit the uh, Q&A, uh, post in the Q&A that you'd like to take advantage of that one-on-one um, -on -one strategy session program. Go to www.mxlcoach.com slash strategy, or if you're going to go ahead and be the first to grab it, post it in the Q&A right here and now. Just make sure you post the best phone number or email address for our scheduling team to get a hold of you and get you an appointment booked with one of our coaches. Otherwise, guys, I wish you all the greatest of success. Um, look forward to seeing the success stories that Kevin and Jim are going to be sharing with us as we move forward with this project. 
Uh, I look forward to seeing a great future of many, many, many purchase stories, successes that you guys are having, multiplying your business exponentially because you took action and implemented these ideas. So with that being said, Jim, Kevin, any final thoughts you'd like to share with our audience today? You know, I think um, I'll just leave it with this. There was a picture that <clears throat> excuse me, there was a picture that was posted on Facebook last week of somebody walking through Walmart and they saw Christmas decorations that were out. And they were commenting about the fact that, you know, they couldn't believe that the Christmas decorations were out and, you know, they were going on and on. But what I took it was for all of us that are looking forward towards the end of the year and wanting to have a great holiday season, wanting to make sure that one's plentiful from an income perspective, this is the time that we have to plant the seeds to ensure that we're going to get all that we need then. And this is the perfect tool to help you go out, get those doors opened, have meaningful conversations with agents, and pick up a lot of business because this is going to set you apart from everybody else. And you know, I just look forward to all the success that people are going to have from it because I know I'm going to have a lot, and I'm just excited as can be in order to participate. Awesome, awesome. Kevin, thanks again for bringing such a great tool to us. Thanks you again. Guys, there's a ton of questions in the Q&A that we're going to be following up with over the next couple of days here. Uh, Kevin, I noticed there's a couple of folks asking about trying to get their boss's approval on this or a compliance thing. I know you've got a preview video that you can send out to folks that can help them kind of take a look at it or, or demonstrate the program and its value. Which, by the way, guys, is a great way to introduce some of these concepts to your business development partners. If you don't feel like you're a great speaker or you don't feel like you are that confident in being able to present this thing, you know, just use the demo video that's on the website and show it to your agents. They're going to get excited about it and they're going to be asking you how to get involved. And, and as long as you're set up and, and in position to take advantage of that by having already set up your account with these guys, um, you know, you're going to be in good shape for that. Otherwise, guys, again, take action. Uh, you know, Kevin, if there's any you know final thoughts you'd like to share with our group today, feel free to go yeah. ahead. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, yeah, just real quickly on the compliance side, I, I know a couple of people have asked that. Um, I, I can tell you guys this: um, we have uh, one major mortgage company uh, that's very, very compliance. Uh, uh, they're just very, very careful about compliance. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just say that. And uh, we we run this thing by them, and got and actually the compliance department signed up on it, signed off on it. And uh, one thing we're doing is with the with the uh, you know, Jim mentioned the ten dollars a year per agent. We actually have an auto invoice system set up. Um, if you it, you just activate it, and uh, when you set an agent account up, uh, an invoice will go out to the agent for the ten dollars a year, um, and then you can mark it as paid. And you can actually CC that to uh, you can have it CC to your compliance department. So if you're with a big bank or somebody that's you know that's really want to be making sure everything's all the uh, um, T's are crossed, I's are dotted, so forth. We've we've got all that covered. I also notice there's a lot of other questions in here that we. I'll reach out to you and get, get with you guys individually. And, you know, someone had asked a question or they made a statement that $10 a listing sounds better. You know, the $10 is the minimum fee that you need to charge in order to make sure that you remain compliant with RESPA. What you do with your agents and what you decide to charge for it, that's really up to you and them. So we will leave that in your hands, but the 10 bucks is going to make sure that you're going to be in compliant. You won't have to worry about, about it from an audit perspective. Awesome, awesome, folks. Well,